Good afternoon, um, everyone. Um, we are happy to see you here. Those of you who made it to Thursday at three o'clock. So our uh, webinar has traditionally been a Friday three o'clock uh, webinar. We've moved it back to Thursday because we thought that many of you had indicated that would be a better time to participate. And um, welcome, Thursday afternoon. Um, we've got a fair amount to cover today. Um, the topic today, and Steve Denny will be our presenter today, is Survive, Pivot, and Thrive. And again, we're looking at uh, surviving, pivoting, and thriving post-COVID. Uh, there will be some recap because we do know a few new things uh, today uh, following the, uh, the, the webinar from two weeks ago. Uh, and then some new information uh, regarding the CEO to CEO uh, uh, program. We've had a super exciting two weeks within Innovative, and uh, it's really exciting. Steve and Terry both will be sharing information about a new program we have to offer. So I'm looking forward to that. And with that introduction, Steve, Denny, take it away. Great, Marquita. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you for Everybody that's on the call today, appreciate your participation and moving over with us to a Thursday afternoon. Um, gosh, I, I never expected I would make this statement, but I'm going to say it now. Here we are talking about additional PPP updates. We are in July talking about PPP updates. Whoever thought that would happen. And then we've got uh, PPP forgiveness application updates to mention. Got an EIDL. Update to mention, another update on the Main Street Lending Program, and then uh, we're going to turn it over to Terry, who's going to talk to us a little bit about CEO to CEO. So with that, let me summarize the PPP by saying it's back. So July 4th, President Trump signed an extension to the Paycheck Protection Program again after it had closed earlier in the week on June 30th. They have reopened the window. So uh, for those that had not applied and taken advantage of the PPP program, it is now open and available for applications again. So uh, part of the reason for that was there was $132 billion worth of PPP funding that was remaining. And uh, several of our legislators and cabinet uh, officials came out uh, very publicly and said it was the intention to get this money into the hands of small business throughout America. And the federal government is frankly not expecting that this is going to be repaid, that it's going to be used to put money in people's pockets to keep, uh, keep people whole and operating through this pandemic period. So uh, there is funds available. It is out there. It is available for, uh, for lending again. Now the new close date is scheduled as Saturday, August 8th. So uh, that is the new official date where they anticipate closing the loan window on PPP. So um, never, never thought we'd be having that update, but, uh, but there you are. I also want to mention that there was a clarification that came out in the last week. And one of the, one of the key questions that was asked is, is an employer that repays its PPP loan by the safe harbor deadline, which was the original deadline of May 18th, eligible for the employee retention tax credit? Now, prior to this, the Department of Treasury had issued guidance that said that if you took advantage of PPP lending, you were not eligible to also use the employee retention tax credit. Well, they've changed their mind. So if in fact you were an employer that had a PPP loan uh, and, um, and you used that loan, was part of the initial group and used that loan by the safe harbor deadline, you are now eligible as an employer to utilize the IRS employee retention tax credit as well. So that's a new form of aid that's available to businesses out there that um, up to a week ago was not available. So wanted to make sure and pass that along and make sure everybody understands what that means. With that, let me dive into the PPP loan forgiveness application. There's been a lot of questions about this. Um, actually spoke with a banker today. There's still a lot of questions about this on the banking side as well. Uh, but uh, let me let me provide a little bit uh, of, a, of an update on this. 
there are now two forgiveness applications from which a borrower can choose. And keep in mind that as a PPP borrower, you have to apply for forgiveness. Your loan will not be forgiven automatically, but now you've got two different vehicles from which to choose. The first is the easy application, and this is really nice. We've done several of these for clients. Uh, very easy application form to uh, utilize. It's basically one page and then a page of certifications where you check the various uh, certifications and sign your name and you're, and you're good to go. There are three conditions that enable you to use the easy application. You do not have to um, meet all three conditions. You only have to meet one of the three conditions. So here they are. Let me cover them for you in detail. One is if you are self-employed or have no employees, so you were a self-employed contractor, 1099 worker, um, if that was your status, you can automatically use the easy application. You don't have to use the larger, more, more detailed uh, forgiveness application process. Let's say you're an employer though, you're not self-employed, you do have employees, but you did not reduce the salary or the wages of your employees by more than 25%. And you did not reduce the number or out of or hours of your employees. Excuse me. In that case, you can also use the easy application. So we have been through with, with several clients uh, that have large numbers of employees where they did not reduce the uh, wages or um, number of employees. And even though they were a relatively good sized company, they were able to use the easy application. So the third criteria is that you experienced uh, significant reductions in your business activity, but you did not reduce the salary or wages of your employees by more than 25%. So um, in that case, you also have the ability to use the easy application. Several questions have come up. What if I made offers to my employees to come back? They did not come back. And thus, uh, I had a lower number of employees through no fault of my own. Well, in that instance, if you meet uh, one of these three criteria and you did have that experience, you can also use the easy application. So it's, uh, it is a much shorter form. You definitely, if you can, you definitely want to use the easy application. If not, you have to default to the full application. And the full application, uh, we've got a tool that can help you along that line, but it's uh, 11 pages long. It, it, in, it involves you providing a lot more detailed information. And um, we, are, we are here and available to help. If you have any questions in that regard, don't hesitate to reach out. So that'll cover the uh, forgiveness applications. Let me move over to the SBA Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program. And remind everybody, again, that it is also open and available for lending, and it is unrestricted. They did have it uh, limited to agricultural concerns for, for a period of time there, but it is now open to all businesses, and you are available to apply for that. Here is the link to do so. One of the most confusing things that had taken place over the last several weeks, and you've heard us talk about this on our weekly webinars, is that uh, in the PPP forgiveness application, there is a provision where you have to put your EIDL loan number and your EIDL grant amount. And one of the earlier uh, set of guidance documents that we received from the SBA and the Department of Treasury uh, said that they would be reducing your forgiveness by the amount of your EIDL loan. Well, that has also changed within the last week. So, uh, so now I'm going to quote you directly from the Department of Treasury website. The loan advance will not have to be repaid. Doesn't appear to be any gray in that to me. It appears to be uh, that's pretty cut and dry. So we're, we are taking the Department of Treasury at their uh, full face value. And I think this will give a lot of comfort to folks that were worried about their forgiveness application being reduced by the amount of their EIDL advance grant. And that, uh, that will not take place. By the way, when you go through the forgiveness application, even though it asks you for your EIDL number and the amount of your EIDL advance, 
it does not reduce the amount of your forgiveness. So it's not calculated into the uh, calculations at all. So rest assured that's in play. So next thing I wanted to just reemphasize that uh, if, you're, uh, if you're a medium-sized business, the Main Street Lending Program is now open. It was designed for small and medium-sized businesses who were either unable to or did not feel a need to access the PPP program. Basically, these were businesses that are in sound financial condition and had other, other borrowing mechanisms that were available to them. The Main Street Lending Program is a lender-delivered program just like the Paycheck Protection Program. So that's different than government direct program where the government uh, is directly taking your application and writing you a check like the economic injury disaster loan. So remember, this is a lender program. You got to go to a lender and it is a commercial loan and there is no forgivable portion of this, but it's a, it's a very inexpensive loan and it can be used to refinance existing debt. So the PPP loans and the EIDL loans cannot be used for, for refinancing existing debt. These can. So the loan amounts are up to a quarter of a million dollars, excuse me, a minimum of a quarter of a million dollars. Interest rate right now is approximately 3.3%. Uh, it's got a loan term of five years and you can defer up to the first couple of years of that. We had shared this table with you before. It will always be here on the replay. So, and if you've got any questions, we're happy to answer those questions for you, but uh, you can always get this table off of that. What we wanted to do today was, give you a couple of resources that are new resources that just came about within the last week as well. So if you go to federalreserve.gov, that's the uh, federal website, you'll see on their homepage, the Main Street Lending Program is very prominent in the top right corner. You can click on that and that will take you to a whole bunch of information about the Main Street Lending Program. One of the very cool tools that they've just added within the last few days is this listing of lenders accepting new business customers. So uh, this is a really neat tool. You can click on this. You then select the state that you're located in and it will, it will automatically then pull up all the lenders within your state that are uh, participating in the Main Street Lending Program. So they did not have this before for the PPP program, but uh, this, this is gonna be a very, very useful tool, I think for folks that may be interested in exploring what the Main Street Lending Program is all about. So just wanted to give you some quick navigation aids on how you can uh, access that information and, um, and get those particular answers for you. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Terry and let him talk to us a little bit about CEO to CEO. All right. This is the fun stuff. So, Steve, I don't mean to PPP on your uh, thing. <laughs> my CEO to CEO. <laughs> so, uh, it, you know, we're, we're thrilled to it, it bring this program to light. We've actually been teaching it for, for probably three or four years. Uh, but we never had a name to it. So, you know, one of the things we teach in the CEO program is recurring revenue. So um, business brokerage and valuation side of our business is very transactional. So uh, this is one of the things that we would teach you in a CEO to CEO program is to build recurring revenue in your business. So what does CEO to, to CEO stand for? Chief Everything Officer to Chief Executive Officer. And really the whole program is designed around taking our clients into a deep dive on their financial statements. So yes, show me the money, right? Where is this all flowing through my company? Uh, so what you'll learn is basically the numbers of your company. We're gonna teach you a different way to look at your financial statements by putting in them into an income trend for your income statement, your balance sheet, and in creating you uh, some key financial ratios, which we'll call the owner's report card. And then a second step that we're going to get into is your bankability. So we'll help you create what, what is referred to as a debt schedule, which is all of your loans and the payments and, and the maturity dates and the interest rates of them. And, and then get to what's called a debt service coverage ratio, which is something that all your bankers are going to be looking at to determine, you know, if you have the capability to, to borrow more money. 
And then the third thing is um, teaching you those key financial ratios that really will help you make decisions in your company. And I think the really key thing about it is we teach you to not necessarily look at the numbers, but to look at your ratios and percentages to run your business. So um, this, I stole this slide from Steve. So there's the CEO program has 20 sessions to it. 12 of them are back to back and the next eight are quarterly to keep you on track. So I'm gonna tell you about our online program also here in a second, but the one thing that you get in the 20 sessions with the CEO to CEO program is we will also go over the six key non-financial drivers that can affect the value or sellability of your business. And that's really important because we tell people all the time that it's the non-financial things in your company that may not just lower the value of your company, but may make it completely unsellable. So for instance, we'll just cover one of them right here, the hub and spoke model. So think of the hub, if, if you had a wheel, you know, the hub is the middle. So are you the hub of your company and all the customers, the suppliers and employees are coming to you? So if I took you out of that company, would the company survive? And this is probably one of the biggest obstacles that we run into in selling a business is that the owner is overly involved in the company and it can really make it very difficult to sell the company. You need, so the, the whole idea is to build the management team around you that the owner can be removed from the company and uh, the company still keeps on going. So the online program of the CEO to CEO coaching process, we call the business profit improvement plan, improving your company's financial health and bankability. So you're going to get all the templates that we use to uh, go through on a CEO program. There's not enough, there's not as much depth, obviously, because the business profit improvement plan is four sessions and it's all online versus the 20 sessions that you get in the regular CEO program. But it is a lot less expensive and it's still very great information. In the first section, we're going to teach you, you know, to get your financial statements. Are they readable and relevant? And introduce that month to month financial analysis. We're putting it in everything into an income trend. And we're going to teach you in this program as well as the other one, the difference between regular cash flow and what we call true cash and how to calculate true cash. Uh, it's a very interesting process and, and it involves incorporating that debt schedule in with your income statements. So the second part of the program is your bankability. And that's uh, what we talked about a little bit earlier with creating that debt schedule and figuring, figuring out your debts, debts, <laughs> debt service coverage ratio and your global debt service coverage ratio, which ties your personal debt into your company. And the third thing is that owner's report card, which are the key financial ratios that uh, are used to operate your company. And we'll give you a really good understanding of those. So uh, it's pretty exciting. You, you, this online course is, is audible. So you'll listen to some video um, produced by me, and then you'll have the online portion that you do yourself. And then you'll have to take a test at the end of each section and to move you on to the next section. So it, it really worked out really well. The profit improvement plan, which is also very interesting in this, we're going to show you how to use the percentages from your company that you've achieved in the past to create a profit improvement plan or what we also call an optimal income statement. And it's really eye-opening to see if you hit the best percentages that your company has performed at over the course of several years, what your true cash flow potential is with your company. It's a, it's really, a, it's, it's a very interesting uh, course and, and we in some ways hope that if you want to go through the simpler version of the business profit improvement plan it'll give you an appetite to go through the full CEO to CEO program and that program just kind of an FYI we're offering it on one-to-one -one basis uh, if you're a little bit of a larger company that price is like $2,500 a month and it's not just for one person it can be your whole team of advisors the um, the, the second way that we're offering is in small groups, uh, between one and 10 people. 
and um, that's worked really well for us. And you know that lowers the price down to about five hundred dollars per session, so very affordable. But you will you will definitely learn to transform your understanding of your financial statements. And one of the things that we really preach is that it's not about sales and net income. We're really going to get you to focus on the gross profit and cash flow of your company. Uh, this program, you don't have to feel like if you're a smaller business on the phone right now that, you know, you just don't know this because you're a smaller company because we work with big and small companies and um, it, it is really transformable and you'll love it. So, um, so we say start your path to success. You will get a copy of our slide deck as we always do. The normal price for the course is $650. We're giving you guys a early bird pricing discount of $150. So if you go to the website above and enter the promo code of save150, you'll get that at a lowered price and we'll get you signed up. So uh, also wanted to cover in our future webinars as it's been surprising that our updates haven't slowed down um, with the whole PPP and the COVID and the whole, or the EIDL and the whole COVID financial things that are out there. Uh, we do want to start kind of highlighting the, some of the different modules within the CEO program. And what we thought would be really neat is that we're going to bring on industry experts and professionals. So bankers, insurance people, financial advisors, and really give you some, you know, the view from their eyes of what, how they help business owners such as yourself and uh, things to look out for and just something other than what we're telling you. So to kind of hopefully bring some, you know, some reality to what we're telling you. So we really look forward to that. I think we've got a, we've got a great lineup of people. Um, they're really, I mean, they're solid professionals that we're going to have on the, on the webinar, it's really exciting. So uh, that about wraps it up. So uh, hope you'll visit the, the website for the business profit improvement plan. You can find more information at innovative.com or innovativeba.com. Uh, you can click on the media section and see all of our past webinars that we've done or search our YouTube channel. And um, look forward to seeing you in the future. So we're going to continue these webinar series that we've done for the past, what, 15 weeks now, something crazy like that. And um, we'll see where it goes. So. Great. Okay. Terry, one point of quick clarity, Terry, uh, that the online course is just a one-time fee of $500, yeah. right? Yeah. So very good. Thank you. Yep. Not recurring. Yeah, and you'll get, you know, it's really, I think, to, you know, I think we've really approached this in a good way because don't get me wrong, the CEO program, the CEO is much more in depth, you know, because of the 20 sessions that are involved. But in the online course, you're still going to get all those basic templates that we've built in the audio version to do that. And I really do think that, or at least hope that it'll develop a thirst and it's like, wow, if I can, if I can learn this in four sections of the online, online program, what will I learn in 20 sessions? Does that make sense to you? It does, yeah. Great, great point, Terry, and uh, a good presentation. Um, you know, I, I'll just kind of add, you know, my own thoughts to what you just said relative to the the. the programs that Innovative has rolled out here with the business profit improvement plan being the uh, online version and then CEO to CEO being the coach led version uh, of the program. And uh, as, as both of you know, and as some people in our audience, because I see a couple names I recognize here, uh, know I've been doing business coaching for quite some time and I've looked at an awful lot of uh, different frameworks if you will, uh, that we can use for business coaching. Um, and uh, I will say to you that uh, the, most thing, the, the most impressive thing for me about the CEO to CEO and the business profit improvement plan is the uniqueness of it and the ability for, for, for the program you've built to be very easily understandable. Now, uh, some of what people heard, you may think, oh, my God, financials, financials, you know, uh, you know, 
P&Ls and balance sheets. And the thing is, as a business owner, you really need to know them. You need to understand them. And I love the way Terry and Steve break them down, make them very easy and understandable. You don't have to have an MBA in advance to, to get it. Uh, and afterwards, you can chat with any uh, MBA about your business because you will really understand what those numbers mean. And then the second thing that I really am impressed with is that I've worked with businesses, we say big and big and small. We've all worked with, with smaller businesses and large businesses, but I've also worked with businesses at various phases along their uh, their business growth and building process from actual, uh, you know, new businesses just farming to businesses that are ready to sell, re ready to exit. And uh, this program fits very, very well, no matter where you are, or a version of the program fits very well, no matter whether you're a startup or you're looking at exit. So with that said, I'd like to turn it over quickly to Terry and Steve to see if you want to add anything onto those comments. Well, the other thing that's really neat, Marquita, is, and, and yes, Marquita, just for you guys listening, has been kind of our main coach within Innovative and uh, all three of us have done it, but it was really the three of us that put our heads together last fall and said, you know, we really need to wrap a name and a logo around this. And all three of us have significantly had input on this program. And uh, it is really neat. So the other thing I tell you is we work with a lot of companies uh, such as the Independent Truck Repair Group. They um, cater, it's an, a private association of diesel repair mechanics. Uh, we've worked with the American Association of Dental Office Management, ADOM, and they teach dental office managers how to run a dental office practice. I am going to be speaking for, speaking for Heartland Landscaping Association. They teach landscapers how to build a successful landscaping business, but nobody is teaching them how to run their business. The, the, the financial, you know, looking at the P&L and the balance sheet and stuff like that. And that's what we're doing here. And we really do break it down into bite-sized nuggets that um, maybe it's not fun, but it, but it certainly is learnable. And it will be transformable to you guys because I'm, I've had two of my clients that we've taken through this tell me that they would not have made it through the COVID financial crisis without knowing um, the stuff that we taught them through this program. And one of them was from uh, Washington State. Uh, you know, when she started in the program, she did not know who her banker was and didn't have any relationship with any bank. You know, they just deposited their check somewhere. And, you know, in the program, she learned that you need to personally know your banker. So when you pick up the phone and make a, a call and have a question, you have somebody that'll listen to you. And we really straightened out our financial statements because it was not readable and relevant. And after going through our process, her bank in Washington State was, her company was the first PPP loan to be processed by her bank. And the reason for that was because when it first came out, she called her banker, they knew who she was. They was concerned that, you know, for her financial health and, and whatever, and she had her financial statements in order. So she could, boom, get them to them right out of the gate. And it was the first loan they processed. So, I mean, that's just truly neat. I had another guy that sent me an email this morning and it was re really very humbling. He was with a very large bank, a big bank. And he never applied for the PPP loan yet. And he knew he, he wasn't gonna get a lot of money, but it, but it was significant to him. You know, and I helped him kind of explain to him, it's like, you know, for a small business like you, you probably ought to be involved with a community bank and get to know your banker. He sent me an email this morning that through a little bit of networking, he found himself a community bank and he's got somebody putting in the PPP loan for him and he's going to get his money. And again, it's a small amount of money, but big business or small business, you know, it's all relevant. So it's, it's really a neat process and we would invite you to take a look at it. So okay. that's my two cents worth, Marquita. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so I don't see any questions coming in from our audience uh, right now, so I think we're going to go ahead and begin the wrap-up. Uh, with that, you know, 
uh, uh, Steve, I'm going to give you an opportunity to, to do a wrap. Then we'll go to Terry and we'll uh, say happy weekend to everyone. I don't know who's working tomorrow, but um, since we're not doing the webinar tomorrow and you guys know I'm a part timer, I'm not working tomorrow. So this is my last uh, last event of the week. So God bless you. I've, yes, you I, bet. I am so. working tomorrow. So Mark Hill doesn't work on Fridays anymore. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. You guys are the only thing between me and the swimming pool in the backyard. So. I love it. I love it. And it's such okay. a gorgeous day. You need to go yeah. out and enjoy oh, it. Oh, you bet. You bet. Steve, take it away. So I'd like to I'd like to just say, you know, for uh, b business owners that are wondering if if this is for them, I, I want to give you a quick case study as well. So we uh, we also recently completed uh, taking the company through the full program, and this was a multi generational family business, and they all uh, me several members of the family worked in the company, and they all had a very comfortable living and and. Did, uh, did fairly nicely for themselves and their well-known established business in town. And, um, you know, just a, just a nice, nice, very nice business. But the, but the fact of the matter was the business um, had very, very low profits for many generations. And one of the things that was really interesting is when we started in the program, one of the things we do very early on is we measure what the capability that the business has in it to produce profits. And for this particular company, we determined that they had the ability to produce about half a million dollars a year in net income. And uh, since the family had never even received 20% of that in the past, they were all incredibly skeptical. But the bottom line was after the first year in the program, they actually had net income and money in the bank that proved that their business was capable of generating half a million dollars a year in net income. Let me tell you, over, uh, over several years, that became transformative for the wealth creation of that particular family. And it's going to change the family dynamics, I think, for generations to come. So um, this is a program that Marquita and Terry and I have been working on for many years. We've, we've delivered lots of other uh, programs that were available to help people grow their businesses. But what we kept tripping on was business owners didn't really understand what the key secrets were to getting the most out of their company. And we think we've got we think we now have a well-proven path to enable you to really achieve the potential that's resident in your company. So if you want to learn more, please reach out to us, go through the online course, try it out for yourself, and uh, we'd be delighted to engage with you and help help you determine what is the capability that is available within, within your company for you and your family's benefit. So uh, thanks for your attention. And with that, I'll turn it over to Terry. Yeah. So... I just want to say ditto. It's uh, it is it, the the stories. We're probably should fill up more time with telling just different stories of everybody that we brought through it. So you will learn a lot. Uh, one of the things I didn't mention is uh, you sign up for the course, you will get a free copy of my book, and it was listed last year by Forbes magazine as a top ten business book to read in 2019. So I think it's still good to read in 2020. It doesn't date itself. <laughs> so and. Uh, We'll get you on the list to get a copy of Steve's book, which will be coming out, what, probably in September? That uh, looks like that's the target yeah. date now. So it'll be the second book in our series of the You Don't Know What You Don't Know book. So thanks for being on, everybody. Marquita, we'll let you wrap it up. Okay, well, thanks, Terry and Steve. And again, thanks to all of our participants for joining us today. And we'll see you next week, 3 o'clock on a Thursday. And uh, again, thanks for participating. As always, all of the information related to this webinar, including the recording and the uh, handouts, will be available on our YouTube channel with links to the, to the uh, Google uh, Docs space. So um, goodbye and thanks. Bye-bye.